If you've ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix and would like to send it my way, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. I've only had one true glitch event happen to me, and it happened in the 1980s. When I was in my 20s, I used to live in Greensboro, North Carolina, and would visit my parents in Greenville, North Carolina, which is about a three-hour drive. At the time, which was before they built the multi-lane highway, the last 30 miles of US Highway 264 was only one lane in each direction. About halfway through Wilson and Greenville, on that two-lane road, it was just getting dark. A car that was coming towards me crossed the center line and was headed straight for me, head on. I braced for the impact as well as I could. I thought that this was the end. It happened all too quickly, and I had no time to react at all. Things happened so fast before, quote-unquote, impact. It felt like the other car actually passed right through my car, as if it were a ghost car. By now, however, everything had suddenly switched to slow motion. I could feel the car going through me. There was no pain, just a ripple through my body, and a bright flash happening as the ghost car passed through me. I saw the woman's face who was driving the car. She was screaming silently. In fact, everything was completely silent. For many years afterwards, I thought the other car must have, in actuality, just missed my car and continued to veer to its left, my right, and off the road and into a fallow tobacco field. I immediately pulled over as soon as it was safe. Nothing had happened to my car. The other car came to rest in the field surrounded by a huge cloud of dust. Several cars stopped and the drivers ran to the ghost car to check on the lady. I was too shaken up to move for quite a while. The woman was fine, I suppose, because after she talked to some of the people who rushed to check on her, she continued on her way. I always thought this was just a really weird near accident in which my brain, under stress, had played a trick on me. Now, after listening to all the glitch stories, I'm not so sure. Did I die then and switch to a different reality? Was this quantum immortality? I have nothing else that's quite as dramatic as that happened to me in the years. However, I have been losing things over the past few years. My partner and I are the only two people in this house. There are three categories of these objects. One, things that disappear and never ever show back up. Two, things that disappear and show up right where they're supposed to be. Or three, things that disappear and materialize right before my eyes. I must preface this all by saying that I have been diagnosed with type 2 narcolepsy. This meaning that I have excessive daytime sleepiness without cataplexy, which is sudden physical collapse while remaining conscious. I mention this because, during my narcolepsy episodes, I experience micro-sleep incidents. I perform rote motor actions without being cognizant that I do them. It's things like putting my cell phone in the refrigerator and having no recollection of doing it. It's very similar to sleepwalking. This may explain the objects that never come back. We've lost a pizza cutter, three large kitchen knives, and a number three attachment on our new hair clippers. I could have just thrown these things away in a micro-sleep episode. Then, there are the things that are supposed to be in a certain drawer in the kitchen. I'll look and look, and then hours to days later, the objects are right where they're supposed to be. That's pretty classic, based on glitch stories that I've heard. The last category is the weirdest. The things will be right in front of me, but I can't see them. When I scan my work desk, 
I won't be able to find a certain object. For instance, my stapler. I have to physically touch everything on my desk while not looking in order to find these objects. Once I actually put my hand on the object, I can see it. It will materialize right before my eyes. It's happened with staplers, staple removers, tape dispensers, etc. And in the kitchen, there was a particular ice cream scoop that I found that way. Is this a byproduct of narcoleptic microsleep? Or some weird glitch where I get caught between realities? Your guess is as good as mine. Hi. So, I'm making this post because I feel very weird. Last night, I had used a pair of socks for practicing my dance at night. Before I slept, I took them off and put it either at the edge of my bed or the floor beside my bed. When I woke up, I was in a rush to head off, so I didn't pay attention to my socks. However, tonight, I wanted to practice my dance, but realized that I only had one pair of socks left. My mom and I looked through the whole bedroom, every corner. We even moved the bed frame, took out the sheets, lifted the mattress, but there was nothing. It was weird as I'd only used it that night and only in my bedroom. I also normally listen to peaceful music while sleeping, through my computer on my bed and earphones. However, every time I woke up, my music would either be paused or stopped, and my earphones would be out of my ears. It is definitely not a person who did it. I figured it must just be because I moved a lot in my sleep, so... I let it go. However, this same day, I lost my sock. My earphones went missing too. I remember either putting them on the table or leaving them on my bed after I woke up, but similarly, nothing at all. No trace. This is the first time that these items have been missing. Previously, something would happen, but I would end up finding them either on my bed in a corner or buried under my books. Not this time. I also lost a blue hairband after hanging it out to dry after washing it. It's gone too. But it was possible that it fell off or something, so I let it go. Two weeks ago, still looking now. Can someone please explain this? I'll give an update once I find these items or other things happen. Maybe some recommendations on what I can do? I feel very scared, as I've read that poltergeists may be the source of this, but I am a religious person, so I try not to think too much about it. Thank you very much. The OP did add an update. I'd found my hairband and my earpieces, most likely due to carelessness. However, my sock was found in a toy drawer, there is no way that I would put my sock in a toy drawer. It's just weird. But now, everything is found, so I'll try to forget all these, and I hope that nothing happens again. Longtime casual lurker. I'm creeped out and not quite sure what to do with myself. I had a friend over last night. We ran into each other earlier in the day and we made plans to have dinner together. She comes over and we hang out on the couch for around an hour, just chatting and whatnot. I stand up because I get a phone call so I go to my bedroom around 10 to 15 minutes. I go back out and she's not there anymore. Okay, so she's in the bathroom, right? I sit on the couch to wait for her, but she doesn't come out. I go check on her. The bathroom is empty. Now I'm weirded out. Did she leave for no reason? I didn't hear the door open or close, and I have a pretty heavy door. I even go outside into the hallway to check if she was out there for some reason, but she's just promptly disappeared. 
So now I'm thinking that she left for whatever reason. So I call her. It rings for a while and she picks up. Immediately I think it's weird. If she left my flat, she should be out on the street, but it's very quiet wherever she is. And it sounds like she just woke up. I asked her why she left my flat, and she had no idea what I was talking about. I get frustrated and ask where she is. I'm at home, taking a nap. Your phone call woke me up. I could hear rustling sheets, and as I said, there's no way her side of the phone could be so quiet if she had just left my flat. I live in a busy area. I request to video call her, and there she is, in her home in her bed. She has no makeup on. She's in her pajamas, looking confused, and her eyes are still kind of puffy from sleep. I asked her if she remembered coming to my flat. She looked confused. Did we make plans today? She said that after running into me, all we did was chat, say goodbye, and then she went home to take a nap. Obviously, there is no way that she got home removed her makeup, undid her hair, and changed her clothes within 15 minutes. She lives, like, half an hour away from me, and I have no clue what to think of this. This is going to be hard to explain, but to get to my road... You have to go down another road. I'll call it Road A, with two roads to the left, the second being mine. Then there's a dead end that's super dark because there's a forest there. It's shaped like a backwards P, but the top line of the P goes straight and has my house on it. So me and my friends were following a really big light in the sky that I thought was normal until he pointed it out. Then I realized that it is a bit weird to have an extremely light, well, light in the sky, like a white sunset, you know? I think it was probably the moon popping off, and because of the fog, it looked really extreme. So we're trying to get to a point where we could maybe see what on the floor is making the light appear, like lights in the park nearby. And to get the best view possible, we walk down road A. So, we walk down it and walk over the first road until we're at the very end of the final road. And then there are two guys speaking another language, scraping ice off of a car, and one guy smoking and talking to them. Then, for some reason, a big silver van pulls up on the curve of the road. Because we're at the end with the woods in front of us, and the woods just behind us. But because I'm scared of men in vans and being kidnapped, and we were meant to be going on a jog anyways, I get a bit freaked out. But because there's no way to escape if we did continue going forward, because we're not going to walk into the woods, I'm like, "Er, we should turn around. Because I think we're literally on the second road, the one that my house is on and so we walk down it. We walk, and instantly I'm like, what the absolute hell? I thought we were walking down my road, because I don't remember walking past the silver car over the road that leads to my road and to the first road. Even though it leads to my house too, it's just very dark. But apparently we're walking down that first road. Something I wouldn't have done because I knew if we were on it, I would have just walked forward to my road, and not been that worried about being girl mapped. So we keep going down, but I'm stuck on it. But I also don't go back to see what happened, because I don't want to be like that ten-year-old at a sleepover and make him think that I'm trying to just pretend to be scared. Because I'm not scared, just confused. He said he felt like he was just woken up from a really long sleep, but I don't know if he was just being a little drama king. Anyway, we go back to the road because I have to show him how weird that was, that the road somehow ended early 
or we got teleported to the first road. He agrees, and we also realize that, somehow, when we turned around, the men and van were gone. And I just didn't notice because I was like, where are we? Now that I think about it, I feel like some part of my memory could be missing. Because I remember completely hitting the end of the road and being like, gotta turn around because no choice, hope I don't get kidnapped. And because how the hell did we get to the road one? There's a decently large sized difference between the two. He was also having a confused moment with me and said it was like the road ended early. When we went down my road to see where I thought we were, we realized it looked different. But when we went to the first road, it also looked different. Because my road has a brown fence. That's where the guys were. But it has grass on the corner of the road. Road 1 has stone. But the side of a house. The place that we were with the dead end had the fence, but no grass and had stone instead. Other than that, it was identical to my road. Thinking about it is actually IRL breaking my brain. The more I think about it, the more I'm confused. Not really worried, though. This stuff never happened to me before, so it's kind of cool. Actually, I take it back, it is a bit freaky. I hope I didn't explain that too terribly. And sorry if I info-dumped too. Feel free to ask questions for clarity, or tell me what could have possibly happened. And when I say best possible view to see what's making the light, I mean that lightly. Because to get a view of it, we'd have to go into the woods. And we, slash I, don't want to do that at night. Because, despite how alien, memory-wipe movie-esque this little moment was, I'm not about to act like a dumb horror movie character. It was probably the moonlight anyways. Hey Raven, and hey all. I have a scary glitch story that happened in around November of 2015. I was sat watching the news when I heard a name that I recognized. It was a girl who I went to school with, but I hadn't seen her until recently. More on that later. I knew that it was her, as her surname was very unusual. So I looked up to see a trash can on the street of a neighborhood in Boston. Apparently, her body was found in the literal trash. I was heartbroken. The next part of the story showed her mom and sister sat at a table in their apartment. It was awful, and I was so terribly sad. So, as I mentioned, we hadn't seen each other in years. We literally bumped into each other cutting through a local hospital. She was going through some things and wasn't really staying anywhere so I took her home with me and asked my husband if she could stay with us. Of course, he said yes. So, as it turned out, we knew a lot of the same people who hung out in the neighborhood. Small world, I know. We both also had a problem with substances, which may explain why she wasn't staying anywhere. Mind you, this all happened in the spring of 2002, and I lost touch around 2005, after my husband died and I had to move. Sorry to be jumping around, but I don't want to forget any details. Anyways, back to 2015. I saw this news piece and tried to work out if she had kept in connection with anyone from our hometown. I looked on Facebook and found nothing. No tributes or discussion or gossip. Nothing. And so I called my daughter and let her know what had happened. And she said that she would check around, as our hometown is small and the info should be out there. Well, that's not how it went. Not only did no one know about this online, people were not talking about it. I was confused. And so I tried the next best thing. I looked up the non-emergency number for that part of Boston, 
and called to see if I could get some information or a police report or something. I gave the dispatcher the information that I had. After a few seconds of typing, she told me that no one by that name had been killed in that neighborhood. She checked the info that I had again, made sure the spelling was correct, all that good stuff. The police had nothing. Not only that, she didn't even see a crime that weekend in that area. Now I was totally confused, so I got online and started my email campaign. I wrote everyone who was listed who may have information. As the days went on, I got no information. I even went as far as to reach out to our local Fox station to get the story sent to me. Not only did they have no idea what I was talking about, they claimed to have not been in my hometown in ages. So, what happened? I told three people in my life that I had seen this. My daughter, who found nothing, my partner, who passed away in 2016, and my best friend. They all remember me telling them. They all remember my reaction. But none of them ever heard anything about it either. So, what happened? I'm puzzled. Any ideas? I'm not sure if this is a glitch, but if someone could maybe help me understand, I would appreciate it. My friend was coming to pick me up, and we were going to take a long drive to see another friend. I had asked my parents to watch my son, and while I was getting ready, I had this unsettling feeling that if I went, I was not going to see my son again, that something bad was going to happen to me. I kind of just brushed it off. My friend called me and told me that she was almost at my house. I hung up, and something yelled at me loud, do not take that long drive. It literally freaked me out. I never felt anything like that before. So now I'm getting in my friend's car, and I'm thinking, how am I going to tell her that we can't go? Well, as soon as I get in, she starts to tell me that she doesn't think we should. That something was telling her if we go, something bad will happen to us. I told her that I was going to tell her the same thing, and told her what was happening with me while I was getting ready. So, we just ended up going to Winn-Dixie. It's a store three minutes away from my house. She had some groceries that she needed to get, and we just got something to eat for dinner before she brought me back home. Now, it's dark outside, and we pull up to my house. As I'm about to get out, a car pulls up in front of us. I just thought it was somebody going to my neighbor's house. As I'm walking to my door, my friend calls me and asks, Is that your mom in the car? They keep trying to pull up like they want to get into your driveway. I had knocked on my door waiting for someone to open it, but I went to look in that car, and I was like, that is my mom. And I could see in the car because the middle light was on in the car. I asked my friend, why is she moving weird? Said that something was off, like the way she was moving was different. And then I was like, but that's not her car. Whose car is she in? And then as I'm looking at my mom in that car, my mom opens the door for me to come inside. And I tell my friend, wait, that's not my mom. My mom just opened the door. At this time, I didn't know what to think. So I go inside the house and my friend leaves. Now I go back to look at the car outside and I see a car turn into my neighbor's driveway and back out and then leave but I'm not sure if it was the car that my mom was in, or someone else. So, I don't know for sure where the car went after I came inside, because I was just so confused on what had happened. Let me know what you think.
this happened a while ago, but I still think about it sometimes and wanted to share the story. Because I've been hearing more people talk about little fairies taking your trinkets and returning them a while later. So, I slept over at my friend's house, took off my rings, a bunch of big ones, like seven or so, and was pretty sure that I put them on the nightstand. I'm still not entirely sure if I did, but I never sleep with them on, so I definitely put them somewhere. The next day, I went home and realized that I thought that I forgot to bring my rings back. The first thing I did was check my bags, especially my tiny waist bag that I always wear. I texted my friend asking if she could check if they were on the nightstand to make sure, but she said that they were not there. I thought I might have put them on in the morning and took them off while washing my hands, so I asked her to check the sink. Also not there. These rings were not in her house at all. At this point, I start to doubt myself, and I search through all of my bags. Where the heck did I put my rings? I searched thoroughly through all the stuff that they could have been in since leaving my friend's place, but I just could not find them. I was for sure wearing them at her place, because we have photos where I'm wearing them that day. At this point, I just sort of accepted that they were gone, and trusted that I would find them again if I had to. So, a few days pass. I'm headed to the train station, and I reach into my waste bag to grab my train card. And, lo and behold, my rings are all in there. I need to be clear that... I'm wearing this waste bag every single day. It only has one pocket that is just big enough to fit my phone, cards, and passports that I carry around. I reach into it many times a day, and even searched it specifically two or three times, thinking I was going crazy when I lost the rings a few days prior. There is just no chance that I would have overlooked them. I guess my trust in them returning did pay off. But I still think about this often, and wonder where the rings were in the meantime before they returned back to my bag. To set the scene, I work at a small pet store. We usually only have one or two customers inside at a time. There are two doors into the store a front and a back door, and they both set off a chime when opened to alert us, so we can make sure that we welcome every customer. Today, I was about to check out the only customer in the store when I heard the back door chime. As I was making my way up to the register to check out this guy, I catch a glimpse of the second customer as she walks between the aisles. She's a young black woman, being led by a small, fluffy white dog on a leash. I make a mental note of what she looks like, so that when I'm done checking this guy out, I can go greet her properly, tell her about our deals, and see if she needs any help. I check the guy out, it only takes a minute, and he leaves. The door chimes on his way out, but I haven't heard any other chimes, so I know that the lady is the only customer now in the store and I start looking for her. I'm searching through the aisles, and I can't find her anywhere, until I suddenly stumble across another woman with a dog on a leash. She's Asian, and her dog is much bigger, maybe 50 pounds and brown. I scour the rest of the store three times over, and she's the only customer in there. The black lady is nowhere to be seen. I have no idea where that lady went, and how the Asian lady came in. I had a view of both doors when I watched the guy leave out the front door. No one slipped in or out while he was leaving. I can't stop thinking about it. It's freaking me out. We don't have cameras, so I can't check if I'm going crazy, but I know what I saw. Did the black lady disappear, or shapeshift?
my mom and I were watching one of my mom's friends, two dogs and one cat for the day, and were told to check on them at 12.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m., and 11 p.m. And the first time we went, everything was normal. And the second time, only my mom went because I was busy. During this, the cat got out, but over text, my mom's friend assured her that the cat would come back. The third time, 11 p.m., my mom and I both went, and the cat returned, but it was something else that caught our attention. On the floor in the middle of the kitchen was a random light that had not been there the previous two times. My mom asked her friend about it, and her friend said that it was one of her under-cabinet lights. And these specific under-cabinet lights are comprised of a small, flat circular magnet with adhesive on one side, and the cylindrical light itself. The magnet attaches to a surface with the adhesive side, and the light has a built-in magnet that sticks to the other magnet. Now, this adhesive is strong. I cannot think of a feasible way that the light and adhesive magnet could have moved from under one of the cabinets, where my mom's friend claimed they previously were, to the middle of the kitchen floor. The cat was gone, so he couldn't have done it. And their dogs are short and fat and nowhere near agile enough to jump up to the counter, pry the magnet and light off, and move its two yards to the middle of the floor. My mom's friend said that they do have a crazy neighbor, plus the house key was under the front doormat, and not obscured very well, so that could be the case, but... Why would someone come into their house, move a light, and then leave? Unless they did other stuff or are just purely trying to mess with the homeowners. My mom's friend said that she's going to check their ring doorbell, but other than a crazy neighbor, I have no clue how this happened. Hello. I honestly was hoping that I wouldn't be back with my own incident, but here I am. With the holidays here, I've been buying stuff off Amazon and receiving packages daily. Don't judge, I'm buying for several people. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I had several different items on my dining room table that I wanted to open and go through. I picked up one of those white and blue mailers that Amazon uses and opened it up. I started to pull it out when my daughter walked in. It was a card game for the kids, and I didn't want her to see it, so I quickly shoved it back in and set the package on the table and played it cool. I'm talking to my family, going through other items on the table, and then they head upstairs. I keep opening packages up, and I come across another blue and white mailer. I pick it up and then rip it open by pulling it from the middle so that the perforation opens. I reach inside and it's the same card game. I panicked for a second and then started looking for the first bag, looking for any evidence that I'd ordered this twice. I called my husband downstairs, explained what happened to me, and then started crying because I said that I can't go through this again. He pointed out that the top had been ripped across, and he was correct. It made it more confusing because on the second time that I opened the same bag, I literally opened it by pulling it from the middle. I still can't explain what happened, but I don't allow myself to dwell on it. I choose to believe that I have some sort of gift that I'm unsure of how to use. Either that or we live in the damn Matrix. Please... Tell me you've experienced things like this so that I don't feel so alone. This was 10 years ago when I was 16. I again remembered this experience just yesterday. I was living on slash in the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria, Australia. Rosebud, to be exact. And when I went to see family in Melbourne, I would take a bus to Frankston and then a train to Melbourne. 
and the bus trip always took around an hour or a bit. On this occasion, when I was heading from Rosebud to Frankston via the same bus, I met someone on it and we started talking. It only felt like 30 minutes of talking and we hadn't yet reached Frankston, of course. All of a sudden, I received a call from my father, who I was traveling to visit that day. He was acting a bit aggravated, asking where I was. I responded with, Dad, I'm on the bus like I told you 30, 40 minutes ago. He went off calling me a liar. I was super, super confused, and questioned what I did wrong. What he said scared and confused the hell out of me. He said that I couldn't be on the bus because it's been three hours since I left. I checked the time, and lo and behold, it was three hours later. Yet, I was on the same bus that hadn't reached Frankston, nor had any detours. I asked the people on the bus to check the time and how long we were on the bus for. They checked and looked up at me slowly, with wide eyes also frazzled, by how the hell time could have jumped. I repeatedly tried to assure my dad that I was still on the same bus, and I don't understand how the time jumped. Obviously, I sounded nuts, so he never believed me. That experience has never happened again, and I still try to find a logical explanation to this day. Any thoughts? So that, my friends, was this week's collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. Stories where we highlight the odd, strange, the damn near paranormal stories that occur in our simulation. Sorry, I hit my watch on my keyboard. Um, yeah, stories where they're just weird, strange, awkward, bizarre that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I don't know what I mean, so if you do, please let me know. Um, good collection of stories, hopefully stories you all enjoyed. If you did, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button as it does help tremendously. The other thing you can do is uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the stories and want more like this. I do post videos at least three times a week, typically. Some weeks, like for instance last week, I was unable to because on Friday slash Saturday, my voice was sounding pretty bad. Um, stuff, medication, the uh, inhaler I take, I'm taking, does cause hoarseness to the voice, which you can kind of hear. Maybe not, but I could hear it. I could hear it really bad yesterday, so it wasn't going, well, sorry, Saturday. So it wasn't going to happen. Um, I know most of you probably say my voice sounded fine, but I have a certain level of quality that I require my videos. Unless I have COVID, in which case I do my best and then you get comps for a couple weeks. Ah. Anyways, if y'all enjoyed the stories, hope you did. Again, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new. Um, you can also join Patreon memberships. We're getting early access to content like this as long as it goes up early, which it should. And if you're feeling uh, ever so extra kind, you can do a super thanks to the channel, which is a tip that just helps bolster the channel, boost the channel, whatever you want to say. You can also participate in what we call the word of the week. For instance, right now on the screen, there is a collection of comments where people took last week's word of the week, peregrinate, and they left it in a sentence on the video, the last week's glitch video. These people all left their comment in time, which is between that video and the upcoming Sunday, which for me is today, for you is yesterday. And yeah, from there, I take their comments. I put them on the screen and say thank you to each and every single one of them. Not individually, because it's... I'm not going to extend this 20 minutes. Um, but I say thank you to them all. And... I give you another word, and we do it all again. So, thank you to each and every single person who participated in last week's Word of the Week. You all are amazing. You help push the video up higher. YouTube rewards interactions. So the more you guys participate, the better these videos typically do. Fun fact. So, the success of this channel and these videos is in your hands. I don't know if you know that, but, like... You should, like you know, keep commenting. 
Anyways, thank you again to everybody. Let's move on to this week's word of the week. This week, the word of the week is obfuscate. O b f u s s nope. O b f u s c a t e. We may have used this word in the past, but it was one that I wanted to use uh, from the list. So the word is obfuscate, which means to throw into shadow or to make obscure. It also means to confuse or to be in, um, evasive, unclear, or confusing, such as. When entering your password into websites, it will typically use asterisks to obfuscate the password. That is for security reasons. That's for security reasons. It's a good thing. Yeah. Anyways, that's the word. Leave a sentence. Get included in next week's Word of the Week. Thank you to everybody who listened to this point, and if you didn't, thank you anyways. To everyone else, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important. You're the best you that you can be. Do not forget it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And I mean that every single time I say it. So, yeah. Until next time, friends, much love and sleep well.